Good morning, my name is Chris Fox, and today we're talking about time management, which is one of my very favorite things. We're gonna go over my schedule and look at how I set it up, and we're gonna talk about your schedule and how you can set it up. So why don't we start there, your schedule. When I built my schedule, this was a process that took years. Initially, I didn't ever schedule anything. I hated the sound of an alarm clock. But today, I use time blocks. Everything is 15 minutes. I'll do this for a half hour or 45 minutes or an hour, whatever part of my schedule is up next. And I'm very regimented. The more I've adopted this, the better my productivity has gotten. However, it's not an easy process to adopt, at least initially, in my opinion. I couldn't take like a 15 minute approach to my day and like plot the whole thing out like right off the bat. I needed to first say, okay, I'm gonna go work out at five in the morning. And then once I had that down for a while and I was actually working out every day, I added, okay, now I'm gonna write on the way to work on the bus. And so for probably a year, maybe two, I would work out. And when I was done working out, I'd go home, get cleaned up, get on the bus and I would write. And that was all I scheduled. As long as I got those things done, I was a happy man. And for a long time, that was enough. And I think that was easier to sustain. So if you're new to scheduling and new to time management and you want to build a schedule, don't be regimented. Don't try to plot the entire thing out. You know, maybe have some idea of what you eventually want to do, but I recommend getting really granular and focusing on one thing until it becomes a habit and you can do it flawlessly. And then once you've got that and you don't even think about it, it's on autopilot, then you can start adding more things. And I recommend you start early. So whenever you get up in the morning, whatever that time is, set up a habit around that time and make sure that it's regimented and that you're building it. And if you do that, you can expand outward further, further, further until your day is completely under your control and you get a crazy amount of stuff done as you're gonna see what I do in a typical day. So I am a dad, I am an author, I am a marketer, I do a lot of different stuff. But I get it all done because I have effective time management. So I'm now looking at my schedule here in the background. So my schedule begins as it always has since the channel started at 5 a.m. For a long time, I was unable to work out because the pandemic removed having a gym. I have since built my own gym in my garage for cardio. All I can do, unfortunately, is walk around the block a few times. It's better than nothing. But it is a ritual that I observe. And I spend that time as I always have thinking about what it is I'm going to write that day and or what video I'm going to record or whatever I need to produce so that I've, I've got an idea of it. I'm not allowed to listen to podcasts or anything about the world. I can listen to music, which is great. I can listen to an audiobook if I'm involved in a story, that's fine. But typically I'm listening to music and I'm thinking about what it is that I'm going to write. So by the time I'm done at like 6.15, I've worked out hard and I have a great idea mentally of what I need to accomplish that day. I roll into the house at about 6.15, and for 15 minutes I get to flirt with my wife, which I love to do, as you guys know if you're fans of the channel. At 6.30, she goes and and takes a shower, gets ready, and I watch Kalen for a half hour. So I get to feed him breakfast a lot of times. We hang out and we play, and we just kind of party and have a good time until about 7. And then it's my turn to get ready. By about 7.30, either I'm leaving to go to the grocery store if I have errands to run that morning, I do the grocery shopping, or I'm going out to work straight away. Either way, whether I have to go to the grocery shopping at 7.30 or, you know, I don't, by 8 o'clock I'm sitting down to write, you know, full-time every morning, and from 8 to 10.30 is when the magic happens. This is the sacred part of my day that I defend at all costs. You are not allowed to talk to me or mess with me from 8 a.m. until 10.30 a.m. Because from this time period, I produce, I crank. I have to get 5,000 words a day done or 20,000 words edited if I'm working on a book. I need to really get stuff done. And there's no excuses. Like there's no getting to 10.30 and I didn't finish my words or I didn't finish my editing. That's just unacceptable. So I do this every single day. And this will be hard for most people to set up. But if you are familiar with my channel and how writing sprints work and, and my approach to that, you've got all the pieces you need to do it. You can get to the point where your writing is just this compartmentalized two hour block of your day like it is for me. So I got two and a half hours to crank out that 5,000 words, which is is never really a problem unless I'm feeling supremely unmotivated. You know, maybe I didn't get enough sleep that night. Caleb woke me up four times and I've had two hours of sleep and I'm drooling on myself. If that's the case, I might default to some easier work if I don't have a deadline. 
but I almost always have a deadline. So even if I feel that way, I still crank the words out, even if maybe they're not as good as they could be, just because I've got to get something down in that place and keep moving forward and keep constructing. Otherwise, it's too tempting to give in to, well, I'll just take today off and then tomorrow will be easier. But then tomorrow, maybe you have another rough day and, you know, the one after that, now it's been three days and you haven't written. So I, I can't allow myself to give into that trap, unfortunately. At 10.30, I get to do some fun stuff. I come into the house to party with Kaylin. So either we walk to the park or we just hang out in the house and play games and, you know, do whatever. Right now we're playing Connect Four and Tic-Tac-Toe. So we're going to teach him chess. You know, you probably don't need to know everything we're doing. I party with Kaylin from, from 10.30 to 11.15 and then he has lunch with Mama and Dad leaves for lunch. So I either cook lunch at home or I'll jet out and get some food. By 11.45, I'm back to work. And at 11.45 till 12.15, I am advertising. So either I'm doing raw marketing, there's a number of marketing efforts I could do, or more likely, I'm just sitting down and creating ads on one of many various platforms that I advertise on, looking for the best performing ones, shifting budgets around, turning ads off. You guys have seen me do all this on the channel many times. From 12.15 to 1 p.m., it's clear the decks. And this is usually the first time I'll see my email in a given day. I will open my email at this point and look and there'll be, you know, a big mess in there and I'll spend like a half hour to 45 minutes just cranking through it, getting rid of it. If it's two minutes or less, like I can handle what's in that email, I'll do it now and I'll just crank through them. And if it's longer than two minutes, I put it in the actionable folder. I'm following that getting things done system that uh, David Allen pioneered. It still works for me today. I've been doing it for a decade. And then once I'm done with my email, it's usually about 1, 1 p.m., I take a nap. <laughs> I lay down for an hour. And I don't always get to do this if I haven't finished my words or there's more stuff going on or, you know, I've, I've got other things happening that day. I may not get a nap in every day. But if I did everything the way I was supposed to do it, I get a nap every day from 1 to 2. That's one of the reasons why it's so important to stick to my schedule because I like naps. From 2 to 3, I plot. Or I clean up or I do woodworking if I'm working on a specific project as I am right now. I love woodworking. So like if I get a chance to do that in the afternoon, I love it. But, but you know, oftentimes I won't. I'll have marketing or emails to, to reply to or, or meeting scheduled or, you know, stuff that, that takes up some time. At three o'clock, I head into the house. And from three until 6.30, I'm basically just hanging out with the family. So I cook dinner. I flirt with my wife. I hang out with my son. We have a great time for three and a half hours. And then at 6.30, I head back out to work. From 6.30 to 7.30 is generally woodworking hour. I'm building GM screens or making new projects or learning new skills. And then from 7.30 to 9.30, I watch a movie. I think it's really important for you to, to refill the creative well. So ingesting some entertainment every day is really helpful for me, especially knowing that I've saved it as a treat. So what I would do in the past is I'd watch YouTube videos constantly throughout the day. Tell me if this sounds familiar. I might watch, you know, episodes of a show that I'm watching. And it's easier to rationalize for me when it's YouTube because I could just say, oh, it's just going to be a five-minute video and then another five-minute video and then an eight-minute video and then a 13-minute video. And you guys know how it goes. So I save that for the end of the day. And then I get my entertainment in and then I go to bed. And that last part is super, super critical. You have to go to sleep at a specific time. For me, that is 9.30 p.m. every night. I'm not allowed to stay up past that. I can't doom scroll Reddit until 2 in the morning. I have to be in bed at 9.30 because if I'm not, then I'm going to wake up exhausted. And the next day, I'm going to be useless. You know, I have to get up at 5.00. And now that I'm a parent, I, I didn't, like, you, none of you guys told me this. I feel like nobody told me this. You just sometimes wake up at 3 at night. I get up at 3.00. <laughs> I just can't sleep. So if I don't go to bed right at 9.30, then I'm not going to get any good sleep at all. Not nearly enough. Uh, Kaylin still wakes up sometimes in the middle of the night. We're, gosh, you know, three and a half years into this, and, and I, I'm still not getting decent sleep all the time. So having a regimented sleep schedule is how I'm able to at least maximize the best sleep I can get as a busy parent. And I only have one kid. I know it's a lot harder for some of you out there who have multiples. Whatever you can do to get that sleep in. It's part of why I work out as hard as I do in the mornings because that working out means that by the time I put my head on the pillow at 9.30, I'm ready for sleep and I'm just out. You know, and then my, my wife has to deal with my snoring. Anyway, that is my complete schedule. I raced through it intentionally because otherwise this video would be super crazy long. If you have questions, we can talk about it in the comments. I'd also love to hear your schedules. And again, I wouldn't try to jump into something as regimented as, as this right away, but the benefits of doing something like this are it becomes habit 
I enjoy every day. I like having the structure in my life. It's wonderful. You know, if you're somebody who doesn't like that structure, I'd like to hear from you in the comments. Like for lots of people, I know that a schedule is the enemy and it'll actually paralyze them and they won't get anything done. And they're much more productive just, you know, sort of doing what they do. If that's you, I'd love to hear from you in the comments too. But I really love doing things this way. It helps me to maximize productivity and make sure I don't miss days. Because I'm so consistent with this, I get novels out. And I, I can say this, my God, this blows my mind. I'm coming up, we're starting my 10th year as an author, a professional author, where for 10 years I've had novel deadlines and I've gotten those books out and I've never missed one. I've never been banned for a period or I've never missed it. I've always done exactly what I said I was going to do because of time management. If I didn't have the extreme dedication and the schedule that I followed, there's no way I could do that. You know, my family relies on the money from my books to pay rent and eat. So like, it's important that I do it. Anyway, I hope this is useful. Let's talk more about time management in the comments and, and what other resources might be useful for all of us going forward. I'm going to get back to the writing and I'll see you guys next week.